Hello, everybody. Welcome to Catherine Sews. Thank you so much for joining me today. I feel like a sausage stuffed into a casing in this sweater. I love the little print and I thrifted it without trying it on. It's so cute, but it's like super tight, super tight on the arms. So let's see what we can do to make this sweater bigger. I kept searching for a sweater that was this purpley color because I thought that would be great to just put in a panel on the side but I cannot find that color. So then my mother was getting rid of this sweater and the color might not be perfect, but you know what? It's pretty good. And I think sometimes just the act of sewing two pieces together makes it look like they go together. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like it kind of makes it look intentional when it's sewn together in an intentional way. So it's gonna work, it's gonna be fine. This has cable knit on the front only and the back and sleeves are plain. So I have to be selective as to where I cut this piece. It's basically a gusset that's gonna go down the whole side, probably not into the cuff. I think it'll just be a long, long skinny triangle. Now this also, I think was a little dress. Like look here, there's little belt loops, which are going, those are going really fast. And then it's long. So yeah, it's too long. I'm gonna be adding on that little piece of ribbing. So I think I want that to go right toward the bottom of this stripe. So it's like too long for what I want. So I'm gonna be making it wider and shorter. I'll use the ribbing on the bottom attached to here, make this wider. I think this will be a pretty quick and straightforward video. And I think making sweaters bigger is probably a super helpful thing to know. So if you're good with that, let's get busy. So let's start into this. First of all, these, right? They always poke out. They serve no purpose except to keep this from falling off a hanger, but the neckline is not even big, so it's not gonna fall off a hanger anyway. So get rid of those. And then those little belt loops, those can go easily. That's just a thread chain. If you ever want me to show you how to make a thread chain like that for belt loops, it's actually pretty handy for a few different purposes, but yeah, that is gone. I think I could do a whole video just on thread chains. So then, where I was trying to mark with my soap was at the bottom of this line. The soap did not show up at all. But yes, I'm quite sure it was at the bottom of that line already. So I'm gonna just cut all the way around single layer and maybe I'll just go a smidge below, like just giving myself seam allowance below that pink line. It's definitely safer to cut one single layer all the way around rather than laying this in half just because I really need to follow that stripe. I don't think it would work out perfectly if I had it folded. Okay and now I want to look inside and see how is this constructed and it looks to me like a chain stitch so that's good. So I want to open up the side. I don't really want to open up the cuff though. The cuff is actually fine. It's just the rest of it. So I'm going to try to find that little chain. Can you see it right there? I'm going to cut that. And then to get a chain stitch to just run for you, you kind of have to get it from the right end. And there are people who are super pros at just finding where to pull that thread for the chain stitch. And then there's me and I always struggle a bit. Sometimes you just get lucky, you get the end and it just runs. Like that, a little bit. So once you get that chain stitch, it will just open up. Sometimes it takes a few tries. And you know what? If I can't get this chain stitch to go smoothly, I will just cut it. Like, first of all, I'm only losing an eighth of an inch of fabric. So cutting it is not a problem. Like I'm getting about two inches at a time. So no problem. I'll do that part off camera. So now, I sat and took all the stitches out of this side and it wasn't too bad, but now I'm wondering what happens if I just cut it. So I'm gonna take one for the team here. I'm just gonna cut this one. And I wondered if by cutting it, is it going to roll more? I don't know if it's better to spend the time removing the stitches or if just cutting is fine. And then I'm also wondering, do I cut right in the middle of that seam? That seems okay. So I'm just cutting right in the middle of the seam. I think that's gonna be fine. It certainly is faster to just cut. I don't think it's gonna make a darn bit of difference. Okay, so that's my recommendation. Just cut it. I wanna cut the gusset. So what I'm looking for is a triangular piece like that's gonna come up straight and then taper to nothing, like just above the cuff. This is the sweater I'm working with. I'm not going to cut through the ribbing 
because I want to save that ribbing to put on the bottom. So that's the first thing I'll do is cut off the ribbing here. And so I'll just cut again, like seam allowance width above the ribbing and all around single layer. Good. So I'll put that aside from the bottom edge to just above the cuff. That is the full length that I need. So let's call that 24 inches. And then I want it to be straight up until the underarm seam and then taper to nothing. So the straight section is 15 inches long. 24 total, 15 of that is straight. So if I want to put a cable up the side, so this is the center of my piece. I think that's nice. Do I have 24 inches there? Well, yes I do, just barely. How lucky is that? Oh, I'm a lucky girl. Okay, so I'm gonna cut up the middle because I think that'll be enough. Better not be skimpy. I can always take more in. So that's the cable I want in the middle. And so I will cut sort of in the middle of that line and the middle of this line. That gives me quite a wide piece. That's gonna be just ducky. And I wanna go straight for 15 inches. I'll just go straight to the top and then taper it after. And of course I have to do two of these. Okay, so there's a lot of good knit left on this sweater, so I'll definitely hang on to that and use it for something else. I could make a beret, I could make a bear, I just have it on hand for another project. So now my two pieces, but this one and this one. I'm going to put those right side together. And then we want that straight for 15 inches, so I want it straight to here. And then the last little bit only is going to be tapered. So my center is the center of that cable. So I'll just angle that in and angle that in. I'll just curve off those corners. I do want it not to be pointy there, really. Good. So then the idea is that's just going to sew into the side like that. And then the ribbing is going on and that I think will work. So now when this gusset goes in, my only concern is that it might be a little bit too much fabric under the arm. I might have to kind of scoop out some of this piece. So we shall see. I am going to just baste in this piece first of all, because I do think and perhaps hope that this piece is wider than I need. So I'm going to baste it in just on the regular machine, long stitch length, and then try it on. So I'm using my little clips, which are so nice for sweater knits because your pins don't kind of get lost in there. They don't fall out. Okay, let's go to the machine. I have a universal needle and then a regular straight stitch, but with the length set to five millimeters. So I'm not even going to back tack, just this is basically a temporary stitch for me. Right off the end of the triangle there. Do you see what I mean? Like it kind of looks like it's meant to be there. And then to sew the other side, I just open out that gusset and sew the other side on. Easy peasy. So here I'm going to line up my stitching with that tiny little seam on the sleeve and then come right along. Okay, so there's one side done. And I'll just show you what that point looks like. Right, the point looks totally fine. I kind of like that cable running right up the middle. So I'll sew the other side like that and then try it on. So I put it on inside out so that I can do some more careful fitting. And I've got the ribbing just around me here to see that finished look. And I think it's gonna be really, really cute. I like it a lot. But here, it is a little bit bigger than I need. What I originally thought was that I would take some off of the red to keep as much of the colorful knit. But now I'm thinking that if I took some off of colorful knit, bring the red forward, it would almost make like a princess seam kind of look. And I think that'll be really flattering. So I'm going to give that a try. So here I can't really use the clips. I need to use pins and it's hard to pin on yourself. I think that 
kind of little curve and kind of gives the illusion of a bit more of a waistline. That's the hope anyway. And then bringing that one over rather than taking it that way. Yeah, that's what I'm going to try. And then just get the ribbing back on. Oh, and I was worried about there being too much under the arm here. And they're kind of like is some extra under the arm. I could take out a little bit there, like in a curve shape, like mimicking a normal underarm, but I don't think I'm going to bother. It gives me loads of movement. And so I think I'm just gonna leave it. I think it's fine. Basically my pins are showing me where I wanna bring that into. If I mark this line, which hopefully I can see at least a little bit, and then I have to add seam allowance. So I have to add at least, let's say, a little bit more than half an inch, five eighths of an inch maybe, which is one and a half centimeters roughly. Okay, so that's quite a bit that it's coming in, right? So to do that, I think I'll remove my stitches and I did not even do back tacks. So I can just easily take out my basting there. And that's the point of doing that long stitch length is that it just comes out easily up until the sleeve part is fine. So I don't need to take that out just from that armhole seam down. Good, so there's one. Good. Okay, then I'll put my front in half again. I can see my wax line or my soap line. You might not be able to see it, but trust me that it's there. So you know what, here's a case in point of why cutting it was fine. I'm going to end up cutting it more anyway. So really that's a lesson to myself is don't even bother trying to take out that chain stitch next time. Just cut. It's fine. I can see my soap line is here. I'm going to smooth that out with my hip curve here and then I'll just add on seam allowance. And I am just eyeballing that. No big problem. Here we go. So now I'm going to reclip, rebaste, retry it on. And then if I'm happy, then I will surge. Back at the regular machine with still that same long basting stitch. Okay, so I'll try that on. So the fit is, yeah, it's better now. I like that little shaping, almost like a princess seam in the front. It looks cute. So before I serge, I just need to open up one end of this triangle just so I can serge right through that first side. You'll see what I mean in a second. Now, if you don't have a serger, it's no big problem. You will just sew and then you can just zigzag your edges. That is totally fine. Okay, so I just need the point to be free just so I can serge one side and then come across and serge the other. So that's why I'm just opening up this part a little bit more. And in the serger, I've just got a blend of pinks and purples and reds just so it uh, blends nicely with the colors in this knit. Okay, here we go. So I'm just using a regular stitch length of two and a half, and I do have the differential feed set at two. Just because last time I was dealing with a sweater, the differential feed at one kind of made it go all wiggly. The differential feed at two seems to handle the knit better without kind of stretching it out and making it go wiggly. So straight down one side. I wish I had a little bit more clearance there, but I think I'll be okay. Right off that side and then that side opens up and then the other side is just like a normal seam. Like you don't have to go around the point of this V. You're just gonna come up the other side, that's all. Now this tail of thread, I think I can just safely cut that off, but you know what? I'm a little nervous of cutting it so close to the opening of that seam. So here's a little trick. I'm going to tie it in a knot. And before I pull that knot tight, I'll stick a pin through there and hold that pin right down against my seam so that my knot just gets tight right into that seam there. Then I can cut my thread. Good. Okay. One side's done. Open up that point again so I can get right into the first side. So I don't want to catch all this. So that's why I'm saying I wish I had a bit more clearance. That'll have to do. Organize that so that it's now just one continuous seam. And cut off that thread chain. 
And then this is the one that I'll tie the knot on. Okay, now it's just the ribbing. Here we go. So for my ribbing, I compared it to the sweater and I actually tried it on over my hips and that's about where I want it to finish. So it's just a little too long. So I'm gonna cut off just leaving like a quarter inch of seam allowance and then I'm just gonna serge a new seam there. And so I'm gonna wiggle that right under the presser foot, right up against the blade and the needles and just serge like two stitches and then lift bring that tail forward like snuggle it right under the presser foot trying to give it a little tug so the whole thing is forward and just surge over that tail so that gives me a nicely finished edge at the bottom with no thread chain to worry about so the sweater is inside out and now i don't really have a side seam so when i place this new seam i'll just place that seam to the middle of my gusset and clip. Other seam to the center of the gusset on this side. And of course, it's the raw edges that I'm clipping together. The sweater and the ribbing are right side together. So the ribbing has to stretch just a tiny bit to fit to the sweater, so that's a good thing. And then I'll just serge around this. And then Bob's your uncle, and this one's gonna be done. Okay, back to the serger for the last step. I'll push the seam allowance toward the gusset, I think, as long as I'm consistent. And now those two little bumps on the presser foot line up with the needles. I think I want the left hand bump to be in line with that pink line. And double checking to make sure that my pink line is right at the top of that ribbing. Okay, quick press and then I'll show you. So I want the seam allowance going toward the gusset and the seam allowance of the ribbing probably going up. Giving it a quick light press with steam and then kind of letting it cool in that position takes out any of the wiggliness that might be in the seams. Like in here, you'll see. This isn't looking too wiggly, but It'll look even better if I press it going upwards. That was fast and that is done. Nice. Okay, I love when things just come together easily and quickly and so cute, right? I love this little sweater. And compared to how like tight it was and uncomfortable in the sleeves, it's just a dream to wear now. It feels fantastic. I think that that little gusset just curving a little bit to the inside is quite flattering and I don't think I needed to worry about the color. It wasn't my first color choice, right? I really wanted to find that purple. Couldn't find it and so I think though kind of once you sew something together it sort of looks believable and it looks like that was the right color. Even though this ribbing is a different color from this ribbing, I think that's okay and it sort of maybe it adds to the charm. I think this might be my new favorite sweater. Every time I do a sweater, it's my new favorite sweater. But this one, I love that. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned something. And I'm so glad you stayed with me right to the end to see the finished product, which I love. I hope you love it too. And I'll see you next time on Catherine Sews. And until then, you take care. Cause I've been living life right like I